everyone, Erica from Kitty Hawk here, and today I want to walk you through what to do if the airspace you would like to operate in is not LANCE enabled. As a Part 107 UAS pilot for the past three years myself, understanding the process for obtaining access to fly in controlled airspace can often be daunting. Though since the launch of LANCE for recreational users one year ago, users of all UAS have been utilizing LANCE to operate in controlled airspace. If you don't have the Before You Fly and Kitty Hawk app currently downloaded on your mobile device, I would recommend adding both apps to your digital tool belt as they are essential for gaining greater visibility and accessibility to controlled airspace. Submitting for LANCE authorizations through Kitty Hawk provides nearly instant automated access to controlled airspace at approximately 600 airports around the country, as seen here in green at Seattle Tacoma International Airport near my location. But what about if my flight operations need to take place in Class E airspace here surrounding William R. Fairchild International Airport in Port Angeles, seen in gray? which indicates that it is not a LANCE-enabled airport. How can I fly there if LANCE is not available? The answer is, I will need to apply for a blanket wide area airspace authorization for William R. Fairchild International Airport, or KCLM, through the FAA's drone zone. Now, without further ado, let's dive into that process. First, navigate to faadronezone.faa.gov or search FAA Drone Zone on your preferred browser. Make sure to only use this URL as this is the FAA's official portal for all airspace authorization and waiver applications. First, you will need to register if this is your first time using the Drone Zone. If you will be operating under Part 107 for work or business, click here. For recreational flying, click here. For the purposes of this video, we will be looking at applying for airspace authorization using a Part 107. Click register, you'll enter some of your personal information and create an account. Once you have your account created, come back to the Drone Zone homepage and log in. From the main dashboard, you will see a variety of information pertaining to your assets, your registered drones, Part 107 waivers and authorizations, and Part 107 accident reports. For the purpose of this video, we will be using this section, Part 107 waivers and authorizations. This dashboard gives an overview of the status of your existing waivers and authorizations. If you click this blue Manage Part 107 waivers and authorizations, on this page, you'll be able to see information like the status, reference number, title, date, and applicant name, and type of waiver or authorization. You can also access any documents from approved authorizations right here. Navigating back to the homepage dashboard, let's dive into the airspace authorization process. First, click Create Part 107 Waiver slash Authorization. An overlay window will appear as seen here. The nomenclatures can be a bit confusing and to ensure the highest likelihood of success for your application, you will need to select the correct option for your proposed operation. So let me explain the difference for each. The first option is an operational waiver. This application requests the FAA to waive your required adherence to one of the following provisions of Part 107. Operations at night, operations from a moving vehicle, operations beyond line of sight, operations over people, operations requiring a visual observer, operations of multiple UA by one pilot, operation near aircraft, or waivers from operating limitations on ground speed, altitude, minimum visibility, or minimum distance from clouds. The most common of these being Part 107.39, Operations Over People, and Part 107.29, Operations at Night. In a forthcoming video, I will explain the process for applying for an operational waiver. Now, on to the second type, which is an airspace authorization. This will be the option that we will want to select to apply for authorization to fly in a non-LANCE-enabled controlled airspace. Before we move on though, it's important to note that unless a member of the FAA Emerging Technologies team has instructed you to apply for an airspace waiver, never select this third option. 
Your application will automatically be rejected if you do, and you'll have to start the entire process over again using the correct airspace authorization option. Now that we have the correct option selected, click on Start Application. First, enter an operation title. To find the airport identifier, we can go back to Kitty Hawk where we made our initial airspace search and see under UAS facility map, you will see the airport identifier CLM or KCLM up here, as well as the permissible altitude for authorization for this specific location, which is 200 feet for my location. This will be very helpful information as we continue on in the application process. Now that we've entered in our operation title, you'll see that the responsible party information has auto-populated from the information that was originally entered when you registered. It is important to highlight that if you have a business name you would like your authorizations to be under, you will need to update your Part 107 account details by clicking on your name and clicking Edit Profile in the top right-hand corner. Make sure you have this information correct before you begin your waiver or authorization process, or you will have to cancel and resubmit your application with the correct name. Revisions to the responsible party name cannot be made once an application is submitted. So now that we have all the information correct for who is applying for the airspace authorization, we can move on. Click Next. Now we will need to give some details on the flight operations we would like to do. First, you'll enter in the start and end date of your proposed operations. For mine, it will be August 1st, 2020 through August 1st, 2021. As this is the max range available and I will have inspections I will need to perform in the same area for the next year. Next is time frame. Select all three options of sunrise to noon, noon to 4, and 4 p.m. to sunset as this will give the widest range of options for your operations. Do not select night as you must first apply and have approved a 107.29 daylight waiver to reference in an application for night operations in controlled airspace. There will be a forthcoming video on applying for an airspace authorization with an operational waiver. Under frequency, select the frequency that applies best to your operations. I'm going to select monthly as this is how frequent my inspections will need to take place. Select your time zone. I'm in Pacific Standard Time. Next is the proposed location of operations. Here I have added in a sentence stating the address of the project where I will be needing to fly. If you have multiple addresses all located in the same controlled airspace that you're applying for authorization, add each to this section. Next is proposed maximum flight altitude above ground level or AGL. To ensure the success of your application, you will want to check what the maximum permissible altitude for authorization is for the area you will need to be operating in. You can find this information on the UAS facility maps on Kitty Hawk. For my flight location, it is 200 feet. To note, you can add a value up to 400 feet, but if granted the airspace authorization, you will need to reference the UAS facility map to confirm the permissible altitude for authorization in your specific operation location. Next, you will need to add in the latitude and longitude values for your proposed operation location. You can find this information by using a tool like latlong.net and entering in your project address and down here, the GPS coordinates will be produced. So for my proposed operations, my latitude is 48 degrees, five minutes, and 33.936 north. My longitude is 123, 25 minutes, and 24.24 seconds west. Make sure to select blanket area, wide area for radius as this will apply your airspace authorization for not only the address you listed, but the entire controlled airspace grid. Next, add in the airport identifier minus KCLM and the class of airspace you'll be flying in. Mine will be surface E. 
This information for reference can be seen here on Kitty Hawk again. KCLM is the airport identifier and the airspace class is class E. Next is the description of your proposed operations. It is best to put in as much detail as possible in this section to increase the likelihood of your application being approved. I recommend writing out this description in a Word document a prior so that you can get the most detail added for the highest likelihood of success for your application. This is also a great place to elaborate in more detail if you have multiple locations you foresee operating in over an extended period of time to mention that you will reference tools like Kitty Hawk. So now I will add in my operation description, which I wrote at a prior time. I'll paste that in. Next is relevant existing waivers. Check no, as this is how you would apply for an airspace authorization with an operational waiver, which I will go over that process in a future video and click next. Finally, you'll have the ability to review all of the information that you have put in this application, as well as attach any additional documents that you see fit. Once all this information has been reviewed and it looks good, click submit. You'll get a confirmation page showing the reference number for your application, which will then be seen on the homepage dashboard in your Manage Part 107 Waivers and Authorizations. I recommend submitting airspace authorizations and operational waivers as far in advance as possible because the FAA states applications can take up to 90 days to be processed and reviewed. In my experience, I've received approval on airspace authorizations between one to two business weeks. Thanks for watching and I hope this was very informative. Check back soon for more video tutorials to help you make your drone flying experience easier, safer, and FAA compliant. For myself and the entire Kitty Hawk team, fly safe and fly often.